<laughs> oh yeah. Okay. That's cool. On this episode of the Kickin' It Studios devlog series, we're going to be making a prototype and actually getting into some real game development. As I mentioned previously, I have pretty much zero coding experience. So for the longest time, I was hesitant to get into game development. I assumed I didn't have the skills and it would be way too complicated for me to learn. Programming and development seemed like an endeavor reserved for people much smarter than me. Basically, I was scared and overwhelmed. I couldn't even see how I could possibly get started. But then I decided to do the thing that I always do when I come across a problem or question I don't know the answer to. Frantic Googling commences. It turns out what I needed was a game engine, basically a piece of software that runs your game and puts graphics on the screen and deals with controllers and input and all that technical stuff behind the scenes. After doing my research, it seemed like there were really two great options for a beginner like me. Two game engines that would serve as a launch pad for my VR game. Unity and Unreal. I'm not going to get into a whole compare and contrast pro-con breakdown as I'm really not qualified to do that. If that is something you're looking for, I highly recommend this video by Ponty Pants that he put out on his channel that goes through the differences between the two pieces of software. For me, choosing between the two game engines really came down to four categories. 3D capabilities, beginner resources, cost, and coding. First is 3D capabilities. Both game engines really excel at 3D graphics and physics. This is pretty much a cost of entry for me, as I'm making a 3D VR game, and really excluded a lot of other game engines that people love that I would have otherwise considered. Next is beginner resources. Both engines have extensive resources online, including tutorials, plugins, communities of other devs who are more than happy to help most of the time, and paid marketplaces full of assets. I think Unity has a slightly larger user base and therefore more available resources, but the difference wasn't big enough to sway me one way or the other. Another very important consideration is cost. And both game engines are free. This is amazing and was great news for me. The less I have to spend on things, the better. Especially since I'm not sure if this little game will ever actually make money. So it really came down to the final category, coding. The major difference between these two pieces of software, at least for a noob like myself, is how you create the game logic and actually tell the engine what you want it to do. Developing in Unity requires writing code, specifically using the programming language c -sharp. This means that for every feature you want to include, you have to type out a line of code or more to tell the computer what you want it to do. This is very powerful and provides a lot of control to savvy developers. However, as I've mentioned, I don't know how to code. And to me, the idea of learning to code at the same time as I'm making my first video game felt like I was biting off more than I could chew. Which brings us to Unreal. Games in Unreal are made using Blueprints, which is a node-based visual scripting framework. Basically, Unreal provides hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of nodes, which are basically pre-written bits of code that you can connect together, like a Lego set or puzzle. Each node performs a little operation or calculation on a piece of data before passing it along to the next node in the chain. And you connect nodes to each other by clicking and dragging from one node's output pin to another's input. Some nodes do simple things, like add two numbers together, while others handle much more complex operations, like detecting a collision between two objects in 3D space, or spawning a projectile, or anything else you could imagine. Careful and organized use of these nodes can create elegant and visually appealing layouts that you can navigate through quickly or understand at a glance. So, all that said, I'm going with Unreal. Okay, let's go ahead and download Unreal Engine and open it up. Oh god, what is all this? What does that button do? How do I move the camera? Oh, what does that button do? Wait, why are there so many tabs and modes? Oh no, where am I? How do I get back from here? Ah! So yeah, Unreal seems super complicated at first. Almost makes me wish I'd bit the bullet and just learned coding for Unity. Deep breath. One nice thing about Unreal is that it gives you a ton of content right out of the box, 
and even provides several starter projects in a wide variety of genres for you to try out and get familiar with the program. Want to try a first-person shooter? Go ahead. Third person? Yep. Twin stick shooter? Of course. They even provide some VR projects right out of the box. For anyone else starting out, I highly recommend giving some of these a try. And you can pretty easily make a few quick tweaks to make the game your own. After messing around with the starter programs for a while, I decided to follow some tutorials, as that seemed like the best way to get to know Unreal. However, I personally find that I typically get bored of tutorials if they aren't teaching me something that I really care about for one of my own game ideas. Having my third-person VR game as a North Star has been really helpful in terms of keeping me focused. The world of game development is a big place, full of a lot of different topics, and just wanting to learn to make video games is a bit too broad of a challenge to try to tackle. It's much easier to make progress if you have some sort of game or long-term goal that you're working towards. I'm not trying to learn 2D or pixel art, just 3D VR, third-person game. Why am I making everything complicated? Okay, enough talking. Let's start making a game. Or at least a prototype. There are three things I need to achieve with this prototype. One, get Unreal working in VR and connected to my Oculus Quest. Two, figure out the third person camera and movement controls. And most importantly, number three, get hand tracking connected to the main character so I can control their arms directly in VR. Getting Unreal to work in VR was surprisingly straightforward. Unreal has a lot of tools in place that allow you to connect to an Oculus pretty seamlessly. The hardest part was honestly getting the Oculus Link to work consistently with my computer and not drop out when connecting. Once that decided to cooperate, I was able to use the third-person project template, throw on my headset, and launch it in VR from the Unreal editor. Super cool! But it honestly felt terrible to play in VR. The default third-person camera and controls were simply not designed for this sort of interaction. So let's get those sorted. Most modern controllers have two joysticks. Players use one to control their character's movement, and the other controls the camera. This allows players to move in one direction while looking in another. This works great for most standard first- and third-person video games, but not so much for VR since in VR, the player's head is the camera, and you don't want to move the camera unexpectedly without the player's control, as that's one of the things that can cause instant VR sickness. Other games, like Twin Stick Shooters, use one joystick to control the character's movement, and the other joystick to control which direction the character is facing. This allows players to run away while shooting at enemies. However, this doesn't seem as relevant for a sword fighting game, and I only want players to have to use one joystick at a time, since the other hand is likely going to be swinging around a sword or casting magic. So, I ended up stripping down the controls to one joystick only, and matching the character's rotation with the direction of their movement. This really simplified things, and felt great to control. Want to face left? Tap the joystick in that direction, and your character will rotate. Want to run to the right? Push the joystick in that direction, and the character will automatically turn around and start running. I also got the controls working outside of VR using a controller, which is super useful as it means I can do a lot of testing without putting on and off the headset and can make changes quickly while sitting at my desk. So far, so good. Two objectives completed. But of course, I had saved the hardest part for last. And I got stuck. How on earth was I supposed to connect my arms to this character and control what they're doing? If I couldn't figure it out, this game was toast. I tried a lot of things and went down many rabbit holes, but nothing seemed to work. This can be frustrating, but at the same time, I was learning so much from getting so many things wrong. Like Thomas Edison famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. But I didn't give up and eventually came across something that seemed like it just might work inverse kinematics. This is basically just a fancy way of saying use the location of two points to determine the position of the things that connect them. In my case, using the location data of the motion controllers in my hands and the headset on my head to determine where the rest of the character's arms should be. Great! So now, how do I actually do IK? 
I found a few articles of people talking about similar things, but nobody seemed to be doing quite what I wanted. Eventually, I found a tutorial by Marco Gislanzoni, linked below, that showed how to integrate inverse kinematics into a first-person VR game in Unreal Engine, and a light bulb went off. The only real difference between a first-person VR game and a third-person VR game is the location of the camera. I excitedly followed his tutorial, making the changes I needed to get it working for my game. I won't go through all of the detail of the blueprint setup. If you really want to learn the technique, I highly recommend you watch the original tutorial. The magic node in this approach is called Fabric, which stands for Forward and Backward Reaching Inverse Kinematics. Fabric plugs into the character's animation blueprint and adjusts the character's pose to match the location of the player's motion controllers. Of course, even with the tutorial, everything still needed a lot of trial and error. But eventually, with a lot of guesswork, I was able to figure out the values I needed to get Fabric to work properly. And then, it was time for the moment of truth. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. That's cool. And I can... Oh. <laughs> this is... This is so cool. It's it's like a little me that I'm controlling. So you can see it. <laughs> Give myself a little round of applause here. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Jump slash. <laughs> okay, I'm having too much fun with this. Prototype success. I also feel like I could use, <laughs> I could make a version of myself and do all of the animation and recording and be like, okay, on today's episode of Kicking to Studios Devlog series, we're going to talk about this stuff. You know, and you've got stuff over here, stuff over here, you put them together and it's like, just high five. High five. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's get back to work. Now I've got the nice raccoon face from the thing. Uh, VR face. This was honestly one of the most rewarding and exciting moments for me in my entire journey this far. It felt like I had just cracked the code and that this crazy video game dream of mine might just be possible. I also played around with giving the character a shield, changing some of the camera controls, and putting them into a bigger, ruined castle environment that I created using the landscape tool and some Infinity Blade assets I downloaded from the Epic Store. There's a lot more work to be done to make this game truly playable and bring my third-person VR game dream to life. But this was a big first step, and it feels truly incredible to see this crazy idea starting to become reality. I can't wait to see what comes next. Thanks for sticking around and watching the development of this game. If you have any ideas or questions, please leave a comment below, as well as if there's just anything you want to see more of. If you watched this whole video, please consider subscribing to the channel to get more updates, and don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. Thanks again, and see you next time.